primary care dermatology society and he is going to tell us about the dermoscopy in Britain. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. It's great to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm Dr. Stephen Hayes. I'm from England in the United Kingdom, and I'm here to talk about the work of the uh, Primary Care Dermoscopy, the Primary Care Dermatology Society, uh, in terms of producing a dermatology education and the general dermatology uh, education for GPs throughout the UK. Uh, this would not be so necessary if we had enough dermatologists in the UK. We don't have enough dermatologists, or if um, GPs, indeed all doctors, had adequate dermatology training, but regrettably this is not the case. So I want to talk a little bit about what we've been doing. I won't bore you to tears with the dermatology, uh, with, the, 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 um, uh, with the, the figures of melanoma. You all know what the figures of melanoma are doing worldwide. This is why we have this wonderful gathering here, uh, because the number of people diagnosed with melanoma and skin cancer is going up. UK is not the worst in Europe, and we're not the best either. It's a big public health problem. It's on the increase. Uh, melanoma is killing twice as many people as cancer of the cervix, for which we have universal screening. Uh, we all know that early detection is the main uh, way of reducing mortality, but it's not being done as well as it might be. Um, anyway, so about 2002, a chap called Jonathan Bowling, that you know who's here, um, brought a couple of uh, well-known experts, Peter Sawyer, Giuseppe Argenziano, over, and really kick-started dermoscopy. And people began to discover that dermoscopy actually existed. Uh, I was at one of these meetings, it was really good. The Primary Care Dermatology Society was formed by a group of enthusiastic uh, family doctors, primary care uh, practitioners uh, in the UK some 25 years ago, and uh, we provide a lot of education in general dermatology, but in particular over the last eight years or so, we've been very focused on skin lesion recognition because there is such a huge problem working in um, acute hospitals I do, I know how many people with obviously benign lesions are sent and this is an inappropriate use of resources. Um, so we are working um, to provide a dermatology education in general, but dermoscopy education very much so. You can't read all of that, but that's just a still shot from our website. We have a website which has many hundreds of thousands of views uh, worldwide. Um, we've brought some of these top world experts, which are well known to you, uh, very kindly come over to uh, help us to give some expert master classes to teach the teachers so that we are getting dermoscopy education from the top down through the middle and out to the periphery, to ordinary doctor surgeries, which is where it needs to happen. Uh, the website is viewed all over the world. It's a quite a big resource and we do a lot of dermoscopy. Um, usually there's a case report in our bulletin. There's a lot of resources out there. I'll just quickly buzz through some of this to give you an idea of the kind of material. It's not password protected or paywall. Anybody can use this um, material there, which can be downloaded and used for general education. Um, the website's very popular, lots of people take a look at it. And we are posting lots of dermoscopy images. Now we say that any clinician anywhere in the world is free to download these images. I know there are other image atlases, but this is our image atlas. And then people can download lesions like this um, um, collision lesion between the seborrheic keratosis and um, uh, junctional nevus, um, these uh, lentigo maligna, and these three melanomas, two which are from my practice. Oh, I should have declared the interest. I'm paid for teaching dermoscopy. Um, here's a nice example of a pigmented BCC, which is there on the website. Anyone can download it. Um, nice example of um, lichenoid keratosis. Is, we, we run three kinds of events. We occasionally get experts over from Europe for master classes, and um, we also run these, um, as you can see here. Uh, advanced dermoscopy uh, classes which are run by Jonathan Bowling and other top experts from the UK uh, to teach particularly experienced GPs, uh, registrars and indeed consultants who would like to come and learn. Uh, we also do these dermoscopy for beginners. These are the numbers which have been coming through our advanced dermoscopy course. They're not, the numbers are not huge but they are increasing and they are significant. Um, the dermoscopy for beginners course is something which uh, we've been running for five years and this is aimed at complete beginners, nurses can come to this, podiatrists, any healthcare professional is willing, uh, welcome to come. Uh, the numbers, are, are, again, are relatively significant. They're going up, there are 40,000 40, GPs in the UK, so you can see these numbers are increasing. One of the unique selling points, uh, if that's the right term, is that we give people a memory drive. This is a little um, 
uh, credit cards. It's an idea that we came up with, a credit card size, memory drive, so when people come to our courses, they don't have to be constantly waving their iPads and their mobile phones above their head, photographing the screen all the time, uh, because we are going to give them all of our presentations, plus lots of additional learning material, amounting to a virtual textbook they can come, uh, to, they can take away with them. And I'm glad to say that about half of the Primary Care Dermatology Society Committee are here in Thessaloniki, having a good time learning lots. When we go back, we're hoping to redesign and improve our course, <laughs> take it out, and um, I would like to say thank you, first Monica. We're so glad to be here. And um, um, although I haven't presented any original research, which other people have wonderfully presented, uh, the original research is no good unless it actually gets out into the periphery. And um, we see ourselves as water carriers, if you like, in that respect. So uh, thank you for listening. work in, in Britain, uh, every, every, the government is provided, if you like, a single payout, so it's every, every person is uh, registered with a family doctor, a GP, a primary care doctor, and they go to the GP first. If you're worried about a mole, you go to see your GP, and if your GP has enough skill, they will reassure and advise. If they don't have enough skill, they refer you to hospital, and this goes by, by decree, it's an urgent cancer pathway. Um, so I, I, I personally work at the receiving end of that, and we see people with warts and pimples and blackheads and barn door obvious seborrheic warts and banal nevi referred up to a cancer clinic <laughs> and it has big impacts on our ability to deliver services. That's one reason why we're so passionate about getting up what is already known so that it is actually put into practice. So the GPs are not allowed to excise suspected cancers in Britain, they must refer them all. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you act as a barrier to the, to the dermatologist? <laughs> it's, a lo it's, a long, it's a long story. It's a, I, mean, I was a GP, I personally am now working as an associate specialist in dermatology, also as our GPs. It's, it would take me another half an hour to answer that question okay. in full. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. As the skin barrier that uh, uh, permits uh, to enter what is necessary and, what, and uh, 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 keeps away what is not necessary. Well, uh, the way that we, uh, in, as a, a prim primary care-based education organisation, the way we promote demoscopy is to say, use it as a, first of all, use it as a triage tool to screen out the banal uh, so that the specialist can be used to, um, to do what only the specialist can do. Because it's a waste of the specialist and time. And to I be think that you're using also teledermatology. Uh, it's beginning to happen mm -hmm. gradually. Mm -hmm. I wish it would happen faster. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.